Hi, I'm Mike Sweeney. And I'm Jenny Griffin. And we would like to welcome you to the premiere of Lemoyne College Television. We're very excited to get the station up and running, and we hope you'll join us for future productions. We're going to keep you up to date on all the happenings going around campus. So, let's get started. Tuition. I pay it. You pay it. We all hate it. Governor Patterson has recently been trying to make some cuts in the tuition assistance program. On February 9th, students from Lemoyne went to Albany to lobby against these cuts. Let's hear what they have to say. So Governor Patterson is thinking of taking $75 off of every New York student's TAP award, and he's also cutting grad TAP completely, which is um, for students that are going to like grad school and like postgraduate. And they're also considering doing a mid-year cut of HEOP. Especially in this recession, we're not guaranteed jobs right after four years. Mm -hmm. Grad school's usually a good holding place until you can find a job. I think that it would affect a lot of kids, and I think that's something that New York State really has to think about. Like, I think education is really like one of the most important things, and that's what we were trying to go and like lobby and like tell our like representatives that um, any like money that they give us to, like help anybody like go through college and like stay in New York State, it's really gonna help them in the long run because they're gonna like give back to the communities when they graduate and they're also gonna, when they graduate and they're gonna have better jobs and then they're gonna be in a higher tax bracket. So I think it's like really uh, like a win-win because they'll be paying that money back probably more eventually, so. The whole point of the cutting tap, Governor Patterson's idea is to help fix the deficit. What's really gonna help the deficit is like education and yeah, there might be like bigger deficit now but I think in the long run it'll be like a really positive thing because I think anything any money that comes to kids now that are going through college and going through grad school they're just gonna like give that back later. After the recent tragedy in Haiti many Americans have reached out to try to help others. All week long Lemoyne College has sponsored events to try to ra raise awareness and money to send to those in Haiti. Here we have people from Lemoyne describing their efforts to help Haiti and even people who have lived at, in Haiti before. Do you feel that what Lemoyne has done so far for this week um, is good for the awareness of Haiti? I think it's an effort that's been made and there's been some dedicated people that have gotten involved and they've done a great thing. We had the uh, uh, educational aspects Monday and Wednesday. We also had a short vigil on Monday. We had bingo night which had a lot of turnout and everybody had to pay five dollars just to get a card. So resources are being, that was, they got a lot of money last night. Tonight is at 7 p.m. Um, there's a uh, 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 student talent show which people have to pay five dollars to get into that too so I'm hoping that's a big turnout good money there um, but we can't get complacent we can't stop there so I hope that this week is kind of almost a kickoff to Haiti relief. It would be the equivalent of everybody in Syracuse dying in, a, in an earthquake um, without fire department with, without hospitals sufficient doctors. Haiti has been has been in misery for centuries and we kind of ignored it. And this is an opportunity for us to get to know that area and not forget it. So do you feel that, um, as you just said, uh, this is a kickoff week, do you feel that uh, maybe once a month we should, uh, or like uh, maybe have a, a donation box or a jar in offices around campus that are, are made for people just to throw their change in and to continue throughout the semester? And I think people should definitely look at the different groups on campus. There's Bond, Power, um, El Progresso, organizations wage that um, can get involved and you know even if we just sit there like LSPB can get us these little blue wristbands and um, essentially you can go door to door trying to raise money and, and I think that's good but I also think that this is much bigger than just Lemoyne. I lived in Haiti for two years <clears throat> from 95 to 97. I'd also spent a summer there and Haiti was always a, a very, very poor country. Getting aid there is like going through a small bottleneck. Um, and you really can't trust everybody. Lemoyne's doing its part, but I think cross campus um, would be a good thing to do too, because this is a huge effort that we need to head up. Right now, I, I know there's some building going on, but they, to have uh, a group from Lemoyne come right now, you know, we'd need to be worrying about you know shelter for ourselves and food and so on and perhaps taking away from someone who's already there. Speaking on across campus, uh, there's organizations, student-run and student government organizations that um, 
at campuses like SU that uh, I've been speaking with and um, other students here have been speaking with and uh, you know some things down the road might lead to across campus uh, more information sessions and raising awareness and uh, further like uh, raising money for proceeds to go down there do you think that'd be beneficial for Lemoyne to to branch out to these other campuses for this and do you think it could lead to other good things for cross campus and down I the road? I think Lemoyne has to do that because we have we have I think a lot of dedicated students that um, are ready and willing to support this right now no, we can't really go down there and help. They need medical personnel who are highly trained, and they need people to organize that. And sacrifice their time and their money to help Haiti. Um, but SU, I mean, that's that's a whole bunch more resources. And, and again, it should be competing. Lemoyne's doing this, SU's doing this. I think we, because I've been in contact with some SU groups too, they've said that if we want to get together um, resources, whether it be uh, shoes or clothing and stuff like this, they'll come with their vans and some of this and pick up what we've gathered. You know what I'm saying? So wow. we, we can cooperate in that sense. And again, it's not competition um, to be which school's doing the best. It should be cooperation for the greater good, which is to help the Haiti. On a lighter note, Roseanne Cash recently performed here at Lemoyne College. Let's take a closer look. On January 27th, Roseanne Cash performed at Lemoyne College. She graced us with an interview about her family, her music, and her passions. So, I want to ask you actually, I understand that your father, um, he was inspired to research his family history, the mm -hmm. Scottish side yeah. of family history, after a chance in, uh, meeting on a uh, 1970s yes. plane. Uh, what inspired you to, to, because I understand after your father's passing, you've actually been uh, going to Scotland quite a lot and sort of mm -hmm. researching your, yeah. or filling in the holes as it were. I think that that is a normal, developmental thing that happens is when you lose your parents particularly you're more interested in your genealogy and where you came from and what they've left you and who you are and how the past connects with you and connects with your own children into the future and I did get more interested in our family history in my 40s and since both my parents have died I'm much more interested in it I think I, I don't know that young people are or should be as interested in that because it is all about the future for them but at my age a lot of it is about the past and and what i'm leaving to my own children mm -hmm. well i think that's sort of reflected on your latest album the list so yeah a, a exactly of the past now as i understand it was a list of a hundred songs that your father passed on to you yes of hundred songs could you develop on that story well he gave me a list when i was 18 years old he gave me a list of 100 songs that he considered essential songs cool. essential country songs but it was broader than country it was um early folk southern blues delta gospel it was really american roots music and it was an education in fact that's what he said when he gave it to me this is your education and uh, i kept that list all of these years and i never ever thought about making a record based on the list until the last two years you know i think it's the same thing about being interested in your genealogy i was i i'm interested in my musical genealogy and i have this document this education this legacy that he gave me and it's only now that i thought it's time to step into it. But as I understand, the Cash family, uh, the American side, it uh, happened in 1612, I believe. Um, yeah, might have been a little bit later than that, 1630 something maybe. The first William Cash came over from Fife and settled in Salem, Massachusetts, and then he brought his nephew over and he went south and settled in Virginia, and that's my family's line. Mm -hmm. And then you yourself, you, you were born in Memphis, Tennessee. Right. right? Mm -hmm. so that's quite, quite a journey, really, from East Fife. And I, I don't know if that really makes sense. I mean, I, I understand you've been to Fife since, but yeah. um, going from Fife to Tennessee is really quite a leap. Um, <laughs> I mean, rolling hills, beauty, green. Yeah. Obviously, your recent album, The List, uh, was, as we said earlier, the 100 songs that your father yeah. had compiled. Um, now, in terms of prose, or as, as, a, as a writer yourself, could you name any influences? I'm not asking you to list a hundred you know, artists, but just a few of who have influenced you. Well, the Beatles were tremendously important to me because I grew up in that era, and um, that was the first thing that kind of just opened my mind 
wide and thought, oh, this is my music, you know? I, I'd loved Ray Charles and all the things my mother listened to. I loved my dad, he was tremendously influential. But the, when the Beatles came, you know, that was kind of shook me to my core. Lemoyne College recently received some national attention. Alumni Tim Decay, who is currently starring on the hit show White Collar on USA, featured Lemoyne Apparel on the show. Be sure to keep watching and support your fellow Dolphin. Lemoyne College is to receive public exposure on the USA Network hit series White Collar. Former Lemoyne student Tim Decay will be wearing Lemoyne merchandise during his performance as a federal agent. However, after no merchandise was seen in the first episode, faculty and students are curious to see when it will appear. There is a epi an episode where he's going to wear our clothing on the end of I, the month, I think. I think it's the next one, but I'm not too sure. Previews for the next episode show Decay wearing what would appear to be a Lemoyne sweater. Only time will tell. Welcome back. I'm joined by Scott Smith, who's here to give us a male perspective on the movie Valentine's Day. So Scott, what did you think of the movie? Well, personally, Jenny, I thought the movie's underwritten and overacted. This, I mean, this film just could have been much better than it really was. See, I disagree. I thought it was quite good. I really enjoyed the... Jenny, Jenny, I will let you finish. But I just wanted to say that Wolfman was one of the greatest movies of all time! Um, uh, we'll, be we'll be back right in back. just a minute. We're sorry for that mix-up, folks. Security is roughing them up a little bit before they set him on his way. In other news, Lemoyne's Biggest Loser Challenge begins this week. For now, only faculty and staff are eligible to participate, but it's a great community event. Let's hear more about it. We have an initial weigh-in with the health office. Um, we're going to be working with coaches. We've each put in money um, as an incentive to lose weight, and that money will go towards the, the prize money for the first, second, and third place highest losers. We decided that we'd really like to be the test pilot for it so that when the students do become participants that we know what the strengths of the program were, we know what the students would like probably to get out of it, so that if we do put one of these challenges together um, for students, we can really hit the ground running. Each one of us have our own jobs that we have to do in the course of the day. And although we're a small campus, we don't necessarily pe see people from other departments or other buildings in the course of the day. And what we're hoping is we've had people from all over campus sign up for it. And so we'll get to see people in our course, the course of the day that we wouldn't normally see. We do have some people who joined who don't really have any weight to lose. But because of the excitement and the enthusiasm and because it's a new program and a new, new kind of challenge and a way for faculty, staff, and administrators to get together, they're signed up because they want to be a part of that community. And it will build community and, you know, in the end, we're going to, it'll be May, it'll be spring, we'll be healthier, we'll be more fit and, you know, hopefully have made some new friends. Well, folks, we hope you enjoyed the first and hopefully not the last production of Lemoyne College Television. Thanks for tuning in, and be sure to tune in to our future productions. I'm Mike Sweeney. And I'm Jenny Griffin. That's all, folks. And hey, if you'd like to join LCTV, we meet every week, Sunday at 6 o'clock. Hey, Mike Sweeney here, and don't go away. We have one more story. NCAA tournament could be in this team's future. But they, they kind of struggled through December and January, but just like last season, they've gotten red hot again. They're about to win their sixth consecutive game, or so it appears, against New Haven. And they have three more games left against teams that are ahead of in the standings. That would put them at 19 wins. They have a, they'll probably host, they'll definitely host at least one conference tournament game, if not more. They might even get a first round bye. Let's go, let's go, get this crowd in the game. Come on, come on, let's go. Keying the Dolphins' resurgence is reigning East Region Player of the Year, Lawrence Perrigan. How good is he? Well, let me think about this one. Uh, there's a guy by the name of Lawrence Perrigan. He's all right. He's about to uh, break school records for points and rebounds. So uh, I think he's pretty decent. Probably go down as the best all-time to ever grace the Ted Grant court floor. 
Seeing Lawrence like Paragon is very exciting and worth the price of admission. But earlier this season, the Finn bin could be described as half empty. Well, you know, at the start of the season there was a lot of fans, but then the team kind of struggled and the fans sort of went away. So the key is, is to win. And it's not an empty gym, whereas the women's games are pretty much playing to a, an audience of a couple dozen people. So it's good to see a couple hundred fans in the seats, but you always want to pack the gym. And there are some really talented players on this team who are worth seeing. That raises the question, is the athletic talent at LeMoyne College good enough to make the jump to Division I? There are many conflicts about this question. Well, I have a lot of thoughts on this, actually, uh, on the division change or not to change. And as appealing as Division One sounds, I mean, everyone wants to be Division One. Everyone's going Division One these days. I mean, the NCAA had to put a stop to it for a year and a half just to, you know, to take a breather from it. But I think LeMoyne is doing a great thing where it is right now. It's got two Division One teams in baseball and women's lacrosse. But I just don't think with the current facilities we can honestly compete legitimately at the Division One level across the board. So it might be a good idea to pull the women's lacrosse and baseball programs down to Division II. I know they wouldn't like that because you don't want to seem to be downgrading, but they're currently playing without a conference and that's no fun. That means they really have no chance at a postseason, so you bring them back to D2, you level the playing field more, and you give them a chance to uh, for a postseason and maybe even a national championship. So I think that uh, D2 is probably the way to go, barring a multi-million dollar renovation of all the athletic facilities here. Would upgrading facilities increase the number of fans who come to Le Moyne games? Or are there other factors that keep people away? I don't know if it's the snow today, but it's it's like this on sunny days too, so I don't really have an answer for, as to how to get more people here. But strip, strippers would work for me. Well, thank you, Kenny. Le Moyne College won a very close game over New Haven, 67-66 to on a missed free throw at the end.